Good morning. We are so glad to see you this morning. It is good to be here. It's a good place to be, and we're glad that you are worshiping with us. If you look on the back of your bulletin, there's several announcements. Dan Philbeck is our deacon of the week. He'll be reading the Isaiah passage in just a little bit. Next Saturday is our BBS, our Christian Olympics, and you thought you were almost finished with the Olympics. We're going to have a great time starting at 10 and lasting till 1, ages 3 to rising 5th graders. Uh, teachers uh, need to be here at 9.15 to pick up your packet and your station. And uh, if you have any questions about that, see Lauren Simpson or uh, Angie Smith. Uh, we're still collecting the empty paper towel holders and toilet paper rolls, so please bring those if you want. Now, if you're a parent and you can bring your kids... Uh, just come a little early at 9 o'clock in the farm. There's going to be an okra cooking tasting event. Uh, David Goforth, the manager of the farm, will be doing that. He says a lot of people don't know how to cook okra right. Well, if you fry it, how can you go wrong? Uh, but uh, he's going to uh, uh, do, it, uh, do it outside in a tent. It's going to be really fun. And so anybody, just come on out. If you ever wondered what you could do with okra, uh, uh, come out and see it. Now, I want to tell you what a, such a great, great guy David Goforth is. The okra that he's going to be using is not the okra from the farm. Because he says that okra goes to, uh, to feed the poor in our county. He's bringing the okra from his garden uh, for, uh, to eat. And we have a celebrity here in the house today. Ray Goodman's back. Yay, right. And he is a good man. And we remember Frances. Frances is in the hospital, uh, and she'll be having a heart cast sometimes tomorrow, so keep her in your prayers. All right. Uh, rising sixth graders, and this is a really great announcement, I think. Uh, beware. You're invited to a youth, water, and messy games afternoon. You know, it's going to be fun when we tell you to bring old clothes and shoes and a towel, as well as a change of clothes. They're going to have a blast. Pizza will be provided. Uh, our deacon uh, election process is coming to an end. Uh, the ballot will be in this week's way, and the election will be two weeks from today at both services. And we appreciate that committee doing their work. We're still in need of nursery volunteers uh, for both of our services. Please see Jordan Plemons for the 8.30 and Melinda Wollinton for the 10.45. We still need help with hot dogs. Uh, you heard last week that the hot dogs have made $100,000 over seven years. Uh, and we need to keep that up and be a part of that. Uh, please see Winfrey if you... Where did Winfrey go? Okay. And we, good to see you back there. All right, and help with that. We had a great uh, number of people that worked yesterday at the Samaritan's Feet, and that will be in our mission moment, but we appreciate everybody that helped. We have a celebrity with us today, Caleb Lida, a wonderful article of the day, Charlotte Observer. We appreciate him and his journey. Let's stand, yes. Let's stand and greet each other. Uh, uh,
You'll join me in our call to worship. The one who commands the clouds calls us to be poured out for others. The one who creates mercy and hope longs for a world of fair play and grace. The one who is with us in every moment composes a love song for our hearts. We can in our faith teach the song to everyone we need. Amen. Come Thou Almighty King as our first hymn this morning. It's hymn number 247. Hymn 247. Let's stand as we sing, please. Today's Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, Isaiah 5, verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected to yield grapes but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there for me to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planning. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Will you pray with me? Father, as we come to you in prayer, we are ever mindful that all things come from you. We thank you for your grace, 
for your love, and for the hope which fills every day of our lives. With thankful hearts, we come to you this morning in worship and praise for all that you have done for each and every one of us. We know that you love us. It is you who gives us courage and the endurance to persevere even in the most difficult of times and who gives us joy in the best of times. It is you who gives help when we are in distress. It is you who puts gladness in our hearts. We thank you this morning for our church, for each one gathered here, and for the peace which you have placed within our hearts. We pray that others may enjoy that same peace. We live in a troubled world where many have not accepted your grace and where many have not accepted the comfort which you provide. We pray that you will open their eyes so that they too may experience your love. Amen. Thank you, Dad. Our children will come forward. I will meet them on the steps. morning. How's everybody doing? Hey, what's been on TV this week? The Olympics. Does everybody like the Olympics? Hey, what's your favorite part? It's what? Gymnastics. Yeah. Everybody like gymnastics? What else? What else have they been doing? Swimming. Swimming. Wow. That diving, yeah, isn't that neat? What else? What were they doing like yesterday? Yeah, and what else? Running. Y'all like to run? Yeah, I bet you can run fast. You want to run around the building? No. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> I like to run. Some people run really, really fast. There's some races that are what? Real short. And some swimming races that are real short. But there's some races that are really, really long. Some of you have run. Ava's run a 5K. Yeah, was that fun? Yeah, and Ava started out fast, and she ran. She ran way ahead of Papa, and then I, Papa finally caught up with her. Old people can't catch up sometimes. We have fun, didn't we? Yeah. A scripture verse I'm going to read a little bit later says that we need to run with perseverance. You ever heard that word, perseverance? That's a big word, isn't it? How do you persevere? That means you just keep at it. You know, one of the races in the Olympics, it's called a marathon. You know how many miles a marathon is? Let me tell you, I know. 26.2, and that point two will kill you. It's a long race, and it just goes on and on and on and on again. It's not a nice race really to watch, I don't think, you know, because it's so long. But when you finish, it feels so good. And that's the way life is. The writer of the book of Hebrews says we need to run this race with perseverance. And that just means you got to keep at it. You just keep at it. Sometimes you run so fast, you got to slow down a little bit. And you just put your pace and you fin because you want to finish. And when you run this race, you know how you want to run it? You don't want to run it by tripping somebody. That would be, boy, you just, wouldn't that be terrible to trip somebody? That's just not nice. You want to run it in an honest and true way. And then what the, the, the writer says, you run it where God will be proud of you. And you know what? God is proud of every one of you because you're his child, and that's great. Will you pray after me? Our Father, we thank you. We thank you that you love us, and you know we love you. Help us to do what we need to do every day. Help us to love and to share and to be who we are. Amen. All right, keep running. I want to thank Nancy Sloop for playing the organ for us today. I know we all want to continue to keep Doris Rogers in her prayers as her hand uh, continues to heal. 
Welcome back also to Kim Lida, who's been away for a while. And so let's join now in our offertory hymn, hymn number 456, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, hymn 456. <laughs> to kind of give you a good idea of uh, what happened at the, uh, at the event. We had 37-ish uh, people to volunteer, only five of them. Something happened and they weren't able to come. So we had 31 to 32 people there. I do not have pictures in the, in the pictures. I did not catch everybody in it but I did catch some people I'll point out to you as we go as we go through and we're just going to kind of do a walk through for uh, the walk that the children would take as they go as they went through the Samaritan's feet buildings this is where the children started they had to uh, uh, come here to register and if you look closely this is Helen Wicker right here had to point that out because you wouldn't have recognized that probably. Huh. This is where all of the volunteers went first. This is where they came and signed in and uh, found out where they were going to be working. We had some surprises along the way. Some of us were standing outside. We weren't expecting to do that. Some of us were at traffic areas and we weren't expecting to be there. But we put on our smiles and talked with the kids and, ha and had a really good day, I think. This is uh, about 9.15 in the morning. It, uh, the children were supposed to be there by 10. They, they are already beginning to gather. Um, Kim Plemons and uh, Chris Harbin are here guarding the front door. They are in charge of uh, allowing the children to go in at the proper time. This is a little fuzzy, but it is the foot washing room. We'll see better pictures of it later. This is where the children come in and they have their feet washed, measured, put socks on, put new shoes on. The, their feet have to be sized first. And there's a lot of conversation going on between the washer and the uh, uh, and the child. So they get a little bit of uh, love and attention in this particular room. This is the shoe room. You can barely see shoes in this particular picture, but you can see shoes here. This is Bonnie Clay and her daughter Rebe Rebecca, I'm thinking, as, uh, because I know they were in the shoe department and I'm thinking that's who that is. Okay. I'm getting a nod. Yes, that's right. This is a, a better picture of the shoes. You can see the shoes. I wanted to get Bonnie and uh, Rebecca in there. And this is a better picture of the shoes. And, of course, they went all the way around uh, the room or the area. 
uh, these people were there selling extra shirts. Um, I'm not sure why we didn't delete that, but they were there just, just selling the shirts that they had, uh, like we wore. Um, this is uh, Mandy Ashley, Jamie Poe, and Aaron Curry. I'm thinking this is Nathan, am I right? And this is Nathan sitting. He's getting ready to wash a child's feet. And the rest of them are facilitators. Facilitator is the one who takes the child from the door when they enter the room to a station to have their feet washed and their shoes placed on their feet. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Martha Day. And she is, when they come in, when they register, they get a wristband if they're supposed to get shoes. So when they leave the shoe station with their shoes, that has to be cut off. And that's what Martha did yesterday. She and her friend sat there and cut off the shoe bands. Then they go, whoops. Then they go out this door and down the hall. But first, I was able to get a picture of Winfrey Wicker talking to Teresa. Teresa is one of the main leaders of this particular event. She's one of the main ones who get it together. She's the one I sent the um, list of volunteers and took the uh, shoe supplies to. You can't really see her because she's got her back to us, but that was the best I could do for her. Uh, this is a better picture of the uh, um, shoe room where they have their feet washed. And if you look closely, you can see Jane and Amanda, Tim Pace, Jackie Pace, and Keith Joyce. He, they, they were ready to, have, uh, to meet a child to have their feet washed. In the, they also received school physicals, and I thought it was important to get a, a snapshot of uh, the place where they go to get their physicals. Behind the curtain, the children will receive a, a church, uh, I mean a school physical. And this is my best picture here. Of, uh, now let me, let me look. Uh, Lisa Marie Henson and her daughter Gracelyn. They were there uh, um, to guide the children from where they were getting their physicals, from the room where they were getting their physicals, into the room where they would line up to get their book bag. So they were there to uh, direct traffic. They called them traffic control people. This is the room where they were standing in line back here to enter the door to go in the book, pack, book bag room. And if I'm not mistaken, this is Joshua Harbin because he was stationed in that area to help the traffic control, the, the traffic flow. This is, is a picture of the book bags. Uh, you can tell they've got book bags on top of tables, under tables, and there are three pictures that show the book bags. This lady right here is in, was kind of in charge of the book bag area. And this is another one. This door is where they would come in to get their book bag. Uh, this is, um, you're standing in the in looking the, at the outdoor where uh, Chris and uh, Kim are controlling. <laughs> so we're looking out. So they have sent these in already. By the time I got around, they had uh, started the, the process for the children. So these were, these were coming in to get their shoes at the, and this is where you entered to go into the uh, foot washing room. And here is Chris standing, uh, filtering work, doing his job, filtering those children in. And I'm thinking that's it. And uh, that's it. But I wanted to let you know that we and Teresa and Joyce Rory, who was the other person who was kind of in charge of all that happened yesterday. They appreciated all the school supplies that we 
uh, that we sent over. They appreciated all of the volunteers that were sent over. This year, I didn't have to do extra duty, so I got to go to my niece's house to have the pictures, get the pictures ready for today uh, in the middle. But I understand before they ran out of shoes, they ran out of children. The children kind of stopped coming around 12 o'clock, and so they sent people home. So uh, they evident, either they all came earlier this year so they would be sure and get a pair of shoes, or we didn't have quite as many as we had yesterday. I haven't been able to talk to Teresa or to Joyce to find out what, the, what it was, but, but uh, everything that we did was so appreciated by the, those in charge and, by, and especially by the children. I know that I heard too, Miss Donna, Miss Donna's, as I was uh, helping without, and I knew they were from our Brown, where my, where Karen's grandkids go, because I go over there and help, and that's what they call me. They're the only ones who call me Miss Donna. So when I hear the words Miss Donna, I know they're from McAllister. But uh, it, that I think we did have a great time yesterday, as we felt. We, we felt that no matter whether we were directing traffic, washing feet, or whatever we were doing, carrying water, we, we felt that uh, it was where we needed to be yesterday. And we, and we had a great time doing what needed to be done at the Samaritan Feet event. Thank you. Thank you. And let's go ahead and have our uh, blessing of the offering. Our Heavenly Father, we come, we come thanking you for all that you have done for us this week, for protecting us, for encouraging us, for touching us with your healing hand, for all that you do. And now we give back a little bit of what you have given us. And we ask that you touch it and bless it and multiply it so that we can share your love with others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Thank you so much. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 29, verses 12 through 2. And as our custom, I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as it were grand, dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrections. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to attain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They, were about in, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, they did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding his chain, chain and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word, and may we know something this day of that faith and that hope and of that joy. May we pray. Our Father, we're thankful that we can come to you. We're thankful that we have this opportunity to be here in this place. And as we have gathered together in this place, we come with many hopes, many cares, many sorrows, many joys. We come running the race of life. And as we are here, we know that you too are here with us. And that we can share with you these joys, these sorrows, these concerns. We remember those in the hospital, we remember Frances this day, we will remember her tomorrow in the heart catheterization, and what a joy it is, what a joy it is to have Ray with us this day. We thank you for them. We remember Geneva Bowles, as she is at Five Oaks doing rehabilitation. We thank you for her witness, for her joy, for her life, for her gentle spirit. We lift her up to you. We remember others who have had surgeries, who will be having surgeries. We remember those who are sick. We turn to you, for you indeed are the great physician. You heal us. You change us. You make us more like you. Oh, Lord, help us to understand and see that. We pray for a world that is hurting a world where there is too much killing, too much strife, too much violence. We remember the city of Milwaukee even now. We remember other places that are torn. We remember the people of Louisiana. We remember everyone where there is hurt and wanting. 
And we pray that you would give us the wisdom to do what it is that we must do. And we thank you for the children from yesterday, for the many who went, for the feet that were washed. And there we remember, we remember what it means to be your servant, to share your good news, to do the gospel. Oh Lord, forever let us keep that kind of vision and help us to keep our faith. And now we remember that you once taught us how to pray. And so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Both of these scriptures that have been read this morning, the beautiful parable of the vineyard in Isaiah, and then the letter from the author of Hebrews, are about expectations. What are the expectations in life that we have? What are the expectations that God has for us? These are great expectations. It's a wonderful passage that Isaiah. Isaiah is the prophet of the kings. He walks easily in royal circles. His friends are, are often very uh, affluent. He is a contemporary of Amos, and Amos is not like him in many respects. Amos is out of the country. He is rural. He is poor, as far as we know. And Isaiah walks in the halls of power. But God gives both of these people voices. And the voices that he gives them in so many ways are the same. They have different ministries. They have been many talents, but they're the same. It is to be the voice of righteousness, to be the voice of justice, to be the voice of mercy. So Isaiah tells the people a story. God has a beloved. Isn't that a wonderful name, beloved? You are my beloved. We hear it again in the New Testament when Jesus hears, you are beloved. You are the beloved. All of your children, if, if you've done a good job, they all think that they're the favorite. It's a good thing. Isaiah is telling the, the people, God has called you Beloved. He says, my beloved, and he wants to do something, and, he, and he, he builds a vineyard. He gets the John Deere out. He plows up the field. He gets it really right. He puts the right mixture of uh, the soil uh, additives that are needed. It is just perfect. And, and then he, he, he doesn't just go to the 5 and 10. Of course, none of you kids know what a 5 and 10 are to start with. He goes to the right place. He gets the best vines. He gets the heirlooms. He, he gets the, the old vines that are, are to produce. He gets the good stuff, and he plants the vineyard, and he's so optimistic, and you've got to love this. He's so optimistic of what these vines are going to do, he builds a wine vat. He can taste the wine even before it's planted. Talk to him about counting your chickens before they hatch. But that's the optimism that God has for his people, for his children. He knows he has great expectations. He's going to plant this garden. It's going to do well. It's going to do all the right things. It's a great, wonderful. And we, we see the, the farm growing, of all the good produce and all the good that it's doing. So you feel good about that. Well, he plants this, he does all the work, he builds a wall around it, he protects it from the animals, he protects it from everything else, and it comes a time that there's some produce there. And he says, what's happening? I planted the best grapes, and these are just sour, wild grapes, good for nothing. What am I going to do? And he turns to the people and says, where's the problem? Where's the problem here? I've done everything that I know to do, and what has happened? 
He said, here's the problem. I want it from you, justice and righteousness, but the land, there is a cry. There is a cry from the poor. There is a cry for the ones who atrocities have been committed. You have not done what I expected you to do. You have not done what you've been taught. The expectation has been dashed. And it's just like we tell our children, we expect better of you. We expect you to do something with what you have. We expect better of you because of who you are. And this is what God is saying to us. He expects more of us. He expects us to live up to our name. He expects us to live up for our calling. He expects us to be like Him. He has planted the right things in our hearts, and He expects out of our hearts justice and righteousness and mercy and love. And these are the things He wants. Years ago, I, I was over at that place in, in Winston-Salem, uh, Wake Forest. Yeah, yeah, I know that place. <laughs> in Wake Chapel. And Tony Campolo was there speaking. And he, he, he was very profound in Tony's way. Now, you got to remember at one time, Tony said, if you drive a BMW, you can't get to heaven. But that's another story. <laughs> Tony was telling these kids, he says, you know, here you are at Wake Forest. And some of you are in many different parts of your life. Some of you want, you know, why are you here? Some of you are here to find yourself. He said, well, I'll tell you where you are. You're right here. Some of you are going to need to find yourself by taking a couple of years off and doing this and doing that. And he says, you know, part of the problem is, and it's always part of the problem is with our parents. <laughs> part of the problem is, is when we ask your parents what they want of you, they say almost all the time, I want my children to be happy. I want my children to be happy. That's not the right answer. He says, we want our children to be good. We want our children to be morally good. We want our children to learn to do right. Sometimes you're not happy doing right. Sometimes you're not happy doing good. You don't need to go out of this world and get happy. You need to get out in this world and to live your life in a way that is pleasing morally to God. That is to do the things that are ethical to do the things that are loving, to do the things that are caring, to do the things that are right. This is what we want for our children. This is what God wants for His children. This is what He expects us. And we're not alone in that. The biggest fallacy in American mythology is that we're self-made. That we're self-made people. I, I, I love that old uh, commercial. I, I don't even know who it was, but it says, I got my money the old-fashioned way. I inherited it. Every one of us, we're here because of the sacrifice and the love and the care of a lot of people. We are not self-made. We owe a debt of gratitude. We owe a debt of love. And this is what Hebrews is telling us. There is a cloud of witnesses. There have been so many. And he says, I can, I can tell you all the stories. They're so wonderful. A people of faith who have gone before you, who have gone to show you the way. And the author says, and they've not all been happy stories. Obviously, this book was written late. It was written after the persecution of Nero. It was written after the persecution of Domitius. It was written when being a Christian was a, a dangerous thing. And it says, look at these people. They have been hurt. They have been maimed. They have been challenged. But they press on. He says, you have to do the same thing. 
You have to run the race. And you have to run it with perseverance. Well, you, you know I like to run. I especially like to run with my running partner, Lauren. I just don't like to run in the summer. The Lord gave me a wonderful why that is air-conditioned and got a nice machine that I can do. But when we do run, my favorite race is not the 5K. The 5K, there's just too many sprinters, especially these young kids that are so fast and so good and so... Pew, you turn around and they're at the finish line. My favorite race is a 10K. Because on a 10K, you can't just sprint it. You've got to find your pace. You've got to decide, this is the pace that I'm going, and there's one purpose, it's to finish the race. Now, we also ran the marathon in two halves. And when we were in the marathon together, got to half point, I felt really good. Got to mile 15, and I thought to myself, and this is what's dangerous, I said, why did I let that child talk me into this? Why? But when we finished the race, it was all so worth it. When we crossed that line, we knew we had made it. Then I thanked her under my breath. This is life. We're in a race, and, it, and for most of us, it's a marathon. And we have to run it with perseverance. We have to take it day by day, moment by moment. And sometimes it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be fairly ugly. But there's a cloud of witnesses. We're here in this place this day. And I think the fourth sanctuary of this congregation. And we're here because a lot of people have made a lot of sacrifices along the way. We're not here just because we want to be here. We're be here because we are building upon the faith of a lot of other people. And we are grateful. And we want it to be said of us when our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren that we provided and helped this foundation and that we ran the race. We ran it with perseverance and we stayed true to our faith, our calling, and who we are. And we may not be happy all the time, but we will feed the poor. We will stand up for justice. We will love mercy. And we will do what we need to do in the name of our Lord Savior Jesus the Christ for His witness here in this place, and in this time. This is our calling, and this is the race that we are running. Let us run it as best we can, and let us know that there is one who is beside us every step of the way. Our pace may falter, it may slow. It may even become a crawl. But we will finish. We will finish this race in faith, in love, in joy. Amen. May we pray. Our Father, help us to learn how to run with perseverance. I want to know that you have a calling for each of us. You have a mission and a task and a purpose. And as your church, as we do the very things that need to be done, oh Lord, help us to grow closer to you. And we're thankful this day for so many that have gone before us. So many that have challenged us by their faithfulness, by their love, by their sacrifice. We're thankful, and we pray that we too may be the example for generations to come. Speak to our hearts, speak to our lives. We thank you in your loving, caring, and precious name.
we do pray. Amen. Closing him is a hymn of invitation. Hark, the voice of Jesus calling. And our invitation is to follow that voice wherever he leads you. Our invitation is to know the Lordship of Jesus Christ to run this life in this race with him. However he leads you, we invite you to respond. Hymn number 591. you have worshiped with us. We hope that you'll remember the activities this week. We're in a fairly normal summer week. I'm not quite sure what that means, but uh, we're looking forward to next Saturday, uh, Vacation Bible School Day, and uh, it's going to be a fun time. We also want to remember September... Well, <laughs> Hark the voice is calling. There's work to be done. Jamie lets me know. <laughs> September the 10th. Uh, our first UNCC ball game. And so see Jamie, it's a six o'clock game. We'll probably be in here sometime. Anyway, if you can help, we still need some people. See Jamie. Did I do that all right? Good. All right. Any other announcements? That? Ernie, you're looking good back in the choir. Yeah, I like your haircut. It's good to have your family back from the beach. <laughs> we missed you. I, lo I like it when everybody comes back. <laughs> it's fun. All right, anything else? We good? I know. I, saw, I pointed to Jane. <laughs> we, we're really glad to have Jane back. <laughs> All right. Don't you just love being a part of a family? Yeah, our family. I ran out of time, but I've got another, there was one um, uh, example I couldn't give you, and I'll, I'll save it for another day, but I'll let you know. I'll maybe write it in the article. There's this really great story in the 70s about a, a hunger feast. Yeah, it's a good story. So just, I want to just tempt your uh, mind on that. Now go from this place into the world that God has called you, in a world that God has placed you. In a world where you can make a difference. Go out in this world and run and walk and be and go. And know that his love, his spirit will go with you. 
You know that he goes even before you. And he just simply beckons you to follow him. Not only to follow him, but to be like him. You are children of the Heavenly Father. Live up to that calling. In the name of the Father who loves us each and every one. In the name of the Son who came into this world to show us what the Beloved was all about. And in the name of the Spirit that will go with you every step of the way. We do pray. Thank you.